How you doing today? <laughs> You're hilarious. Thanks for coming. Today we're going to be talking about promoting your business. Right? What are the things that you can do to make your business better, which is your bar, right? Whether you're a server, a, a waiter, a waitress, a bartender, you know, what are ways that we can go out and do like, to make our bar busier? Any ideas? Visit your customers at their place of work. That's a great idea. First of all, who is your best customer? Industry, Industry. Industry. Industry people. Exactly, why? Because they, they understand. understand they understand? <laughs> yeah, sure. You know, they understand. They have you know good personalities. We like those kind of uh, you know crazy people in our bar. They have money. Yeah. They have money. They have, they have disposable income. Exactly. You know they're funny. They're entertaining. Like Dave, he's crazy. I want him in my bar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I want to surround my bar with <laughs> with good people <coughs> who are having a good time, who are open, who are friendly, who have a good attitude, and industry people fit that. You know, and party. Let's have a great time. Tip well, absolutely, if you, if you deserve it, definitely. Right. Now, I have a, I have a theory on, on this industry as, as a job. So I don't think it's a job. You know, I think of myself as a bartender or a waiter or a waitress. I don't think it's a job. I think it's my business. Right? How, many, how many businesses, how many people have wanted to start their own business? Anybody? I know some of you have some. Right? Don't Great. Don't do it. <laughs> no. Just how many people... Or how many types of businesses will, will you get into that will, uh, you know, that will pay for your, your location you know, and your lighting and your entertainment and your advertising and your, you know, some, a lot of your training, possibly? Um, what else? Um, they'll pay you to show up and to make money. Provide you with a client base. Yeah, exactly. Client base and inventory. Exactly. Handle all your, all your costs and all, all your headaches, all your paperwork. Yeah, all your stuff, uh, that's a big thing. And pay you to show up and to make money. You know, that's a wonderful concept. Right? And a lot, of things, a lot of people take this for granted. Now, you know, tipping is, is, is great, and that's certainly uh, one way that we make our money. Um, but you know, there's a lot of other ways. But the main thing is let's just not expect it to be busy. Right? How, many, how many people have a promotions manager working for them in your, in your bar? Okay, so, so Dave, for instance, yeah, one promotions manager. Is that all that that person does? No, he's bar, bar manager slash promotions, basically. Interesting, okay, so he's got lots of time. Most of his time to just promote the bar, right? Because he didn't have much to do in the bar manager part, right? Well, he asks a lot from the bartenders, too, so it's, I guess it's a team thing, but there's okay. not actually one specific job. So you, but you see my point, though, right? If you've got, all of a sudden, you've got this split, especially for the bar manager, which, is that, is that going to be a consistent thing? Is that going to be... You know, prominent in the industry where you don't have just one promotions manager, yeah. right? Somebody has that as part of their job description. Well, I don't want to rely on that person, you know, because they've got other things to do. Right? They've got to split their time and among a lot of other things. So your bar manager, if he's getting you guys into it, that's the smartest guy that I've met in a while, right? And that doesn't happen very often, but it should, right? How many staff members do you have in your, in your bar? In the bar, I think there's only like about eight or ten of us, to tell you the truth. Okay. It's pretty small. That's all right. Eight or ten is better than a half of a person, right? What kind of impact can you make in your city by getting eight people who are motivated to bring people into your bar? That's powerful, right? Anybody else who's got a bigger staff, right? Sure, we have a bigger staff, right? But we also have a promotions manager. But I don't want to rely on that one person. Right? I don't want to leave it to chance. I don't like leaving anything to chance. Right? I want to increase my odds at succeeding. Now, luckily, you know, the Roxy is a very busy place and that's wonderful, but that doesn't happen by accident. Right? It happens for a lot of reasons. And I don't want to just expect it to be busy on, you know, on any given night. Now, on an average place, how many nights is, is it acceptable or is it reasonable to assume that it will be busy? Two. 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 And it's pretty easy to get a bar busy two nights a week, right? How many bars are busy three nights a week? Less than average. Less than average. But, well, you, know, but you need three to support a bar. Sure. Definitely. Two is not, you know, you're not really doing that well, right? You might be able to squeak by for a while, but you want the third night, right? Well, how many places are busy four nights a week? Well, now the numbers are really going down. How about five nights a week? What about six or seven? 
Well, the Rock is a really special place, and it's done extremely well. For, it's got a great staff. I mean, forget about me, but everybody. I mean, there's a lot of really good people in the club. You, know, you come in, and you feel really, really comfortable. You know, shameless plug. Come down, and we love, love to take care of you. But around the world, you know, this is, I mean, we're not doing anything really that special. We're just being good to people. Right? Give people a reason to come down to your bar. Now, again, waiting on that one person to go out there and do promotions, you know, I think we have a lot of power as a staff. Right? So what are some things that we can do, that you can do personally, you know, to make sure that you guys are busy, like that second night or that third night or that fourth night? Clint. We basically just started. We've uh, realized that a couple of our nights are slow, so we've realized that we're going to have to get into it. Me and another bartender, we've actually taken a night to promote the night of ourselves. Um, it's like Clint and Kevin's night, and we're bringing in our own bands and talking to our own friends and uh, promoting the whole night ourselves because it was slow. We're coming in there, and there's, there's 20 people in there. Um, that's not good enough for us. We didn't want to complain about it, so we're going to do something about it. And hopefully, it's going to pick up. Not hopefully, actually, because we're working down. So what are you going to do? Um, we've gone out, we've got our own band, we've got promo passes that we are giving out. Um, we are hitting pretty much every business in, uh, in the area, telling them that we're going to have a great night on a Thursday night. Come in, there's going to be girls, beer, you know, cheap, cheap beer and everything like that. And, uh, great personalities. We're going to say hello to you when you come in the door. Right. Um, there's all sorts of ways to do it, but you're just making an effort of, of making it happen instead of just expecting it, walking up and going, well, this sucks. <laughs> you know, well, you know, do something about it. You know, don't just stand there and wait to expect it. Right? Invite people and put them on the guest list and make them totally. feel special. Because exactly. you say you're on the guest list, you're going to get in the door, you're ahead of everybody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they're going to feel like they're special. Feel special. Mm -hmm. Huge point. Totally agree with that. Yeah. What are some other ways that we can go out there and increase the odds of having our, our bar busy? So. Uh, building a crew. Huge, huge point. Um, this is, again, getting back to Roxy, um, something they do very well. Now, they got a big staff. We want to get the staff involved. So what they do is they print up, you know, shirts and jackets and hats, uh, you know, toques, whatever, uh, and they have the Roxy logo on them, right? And they offer it to the staff at, at a major discount. You know, I think it's just above cost even. Um, well, that's the smartest thing you ever do because the reason people come down to a specific establishment is because they want to hang out with the people that's a really big reason right and I want to be noticed like if I want to make more money I wear my Roxy stuff you know I, I got one today with me somewhere right you guys have given me I think three or four jackets over the years right and it's a beautiful thing I'm walking through life you know and all of a sudden I'm that much more approachable like oh Roxy oh you work the Roxy yeah great hey what's your name oh hey why don't you come down sometime right my name's Scott I work the front bar right it's a great icebreaker. Don. Uh, my other thought is, tons of us, um, most of us get phone numbers on, on a nightly basis. Uh, it's always a good idea to keep a jar of it either at home or at work. And on a slow light, call your customers. Call them and tell them to come down. Great Buy idea. Them a drink. Yeah. That's a great idea. <laughs> right? Keep a list of the people that, you know, that are good that you want to have down. I'm sure. <laughs> Some of the people that have given me phone numbers, I'd never. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. All right. Okay. Now, getting back to when you're out in real life again, right? If you've got this stuff on, right? Now, I, I want to be approachable. I want people to know who I am, right, out there because it'll make me money. It's the same idea of, of suggestive selling. You've got to let them know what you have, right? So let them know that, hey, I'm here, you know, this night, this night. I'm always at the front bar. Come down and join me. Invite your customers down, right? Just that simple act that a lot of people just don't do, right? It's a big thing. Right? Now, what else, when somebody comes up to you, what can you do at that point to give them another reason to come down? When they see you on the street somewhere and they come up to you. Business, they are. Yeah. business cards. Well, yeah, that's a huge thing. You know, remembering their face, right? And if you remember their drink or their name, that's huge, right? Just huge bonus points, right? But you can give them. Business cards with free cover or whatever. Huge. I love this idea. Right, a promo pass. I really agree with this. And there's lots of ways to do this. Every bar is going to be different. Every uh, uh, every uh, country is going to be different on their laws of what's acceptable. Some places can give incentives, such as an appetizer or you know, or a free drink or a free cover. There's all sorts of ways you can do it, and you just need to check out your your area what's a, what's possible. But some physical card that you can give with your name on it. Hey, come down to the Roxy. I remember you had one. Uh, let me in. 
because I know Ian. I love that, right? And it had the times, you know, Sunday to Thursday, you know, early. It's great. You know, that's the times that generally bars need to be busier is early, you know, from 7 to 9 o'clock, right? It's huge. But, I mean, that's so powerful. Right? You're able to you know, talk to someone and go, yeah, well, you know, here's a couple passes. Wow. That's going on the fridge. That's staying in their wallet, right? If I give out, first of all, how much does that cost to print up? Like pennies, nothing, really. Right? There are all sorts of ways you can do it. Right? But having something physical in your hand with the logo, with your address, your fax number, an incentive if you can, your name. Right? Come down to my bar because we'd love to take care of you. you know, the slogan of your bar maybe. Whatever. Right? But something. Give them something physical in their hands and give them the reason to come down. Very powerful. Right? What are some other ideas? Sir? Well, Sorry. I mean, you always have regulars on the weekends, and the people come, let's say, Friday night and Saturday night, tell them, oh, Wednesday night we have this special, or we have a really great band on this night that's not here on the weekends. Come and check them out. Excellent. You might have fun. That's a really good point. First of all, a lot of people neglect the customers that they already have. Right? Well, the best people to promote to is the people who are already in your club. Right? So point of sale stuff. They already like it. They're already liking you. Right? So if you can put signs up about... Well, Monday we have this, and Tuesday we have this, right? A, a definite incentive. And I think that's a great place to give out about your passes, especially when people are walking out the door, right? No, you can't use them tonight, but come back another night. Give it to the people that you would like to come back. All of a sudden, they're like, wow, thank you, because it's, it's something. You know, it's substantial. It's, it's a gift. Free stuff. <laughs> people love free stuff. People love free stuff, exactly. So I would just print up thousands, you know, and very little cost. And, you know, even if only, you know, 1% of those people come back, does, you know, I win. The bar wins because they felt special because I've given them something. How often does a bar give people something? It just doesn't ever happen, right? And if they don't ever use it, maybe it's in their wallet, maybe it's on their fridge, maybe it's there, you know, around somewhere when someone, well, where are we going to go tonight? Well, let's go here. Look at this. I got passes. I know the bartender. You know, great. Sure. Be aware of people work for companies so they can have private parties on the times when it's not busy. Huge. Especially at Christmas time and you know, big, big office point. parties. Yeah. You know, give them an incentive. Maybe uh, you know, buy, buy them their first drink, have some appetizers, whatever. It's very easy for, for a bar to do that. And you could have a line on 50 people. All of a sudden, we've got 50 people in the club at 7 o'clock. Mm -hmm. People walk in and all of a sudden, hey, something's going on. I'm going to stay. Well, you get more people, yeah, because then people join. Exactly. Very powerful. Nobody likes to be the first person in the room. Yeah. No. Yeah. Exactly. Well, I don't know if this is something you're touching on, but like one way that Steve T's Sports Bar in Langley got really busy and did like, for them, record sales for them, they had a bartending competition that stretched out the whole month of July. And it was so packed that the cops had to shut it down. They had, <laughs> they had capacity for 85 people and they had 500 people crammed in this bar buying things. <laughs> All industry people. Got cops got are like, got the, got bar managers, <laughs> the bar manager's begging, please don't shut us down. Oh, it was nuts, crazy. And people all still talk about that. And yeah. People yeah. are waiting this year. So having, having special events like, yeah. like bartending competitions sure. and stuff sure. like that is um, a good way to get your bar business. Just on that, I, th I thought they were going to lynch us. Uh, we, I really did. Was that something? This is what we do. We help people run bartending competitions. Uh, we have a package. We have a 27-page package on how to host and organize it, the rules and regulations, how to promote it. Um, and it's free. Uh, anybody it's check, really check, our, check our website, uh, and, and we'll, uh, we'll give it to you for free. Just, you know, just do it properly. You know, run it professionally. And there's other contests out there that are, that are great to get involved with. But some sort of a promotion. That worked really well because you can run it over a series of weeks. At my area, they did like a Miss uh, Miss White Rockers, the hell of the local pub. It was pathetic, but it filled the bar, and people have fun. And I mean, exactly, they yeah. filled the bar up. Good. Another thing that that bar did is uh, extremely successful as well. They uh, basically what they did is they had Canucks Club, and they also had a Grizzlies Club. And every time someone came in and wanted a card, they'd have to fill out their name, their address, and their phone number. Become a member. And become a member. Well, out of this, what they did is they put up a database of other people's numbers and everything like that. And then from that, they sent them out Christmas cards, birthday cards, yeah. and promos to come down. Come down and your birthday. Spend five bucks in here. Like, they had $5 promos or whatever or anything like that. And people were coming back in. They're like, I got this card in the mail from you guys. It's so sweet. Mm -hmm. and, like, exactly. Loving it. I just it. got something to say about that, I think. About the, uh, about the, uh, the database. The database, is, it's invaluable, especially for the promotions people or the half a promotion person. Right. <laughs> yeah. um, wait, like we had, a, we had our uh, 
11th or 10th birthday party did we do the 11th. huge thing? Yeah, it was the 10th. The 10th, uh, it's our 12th year, but on our 10th, we figured 10 years in the industry, we should do something huge, and we rent, we owned the theater next to us, and we had uh, local bands and playing in there, and we had this huge rock thing, and they went through our database and mailed everyone from our database uh, come to our birthday right. party. We ended up mailing out, Christ, it must have been 9,000 invites. Yeah. We had a total <laughs> capacity between the two places of maybe, maybe 2,000, yeah. and we had line up down the block, around the corner, and up yeah. the next street at 7 o'clock, waiting for them to get in. Yeah. Never seen anything like it. And granted, that's our birthday, and it's a big moment. Ten years, a lot of people want to go down for it. But we use that on every staff party we have, uh, Christmas party, anything. We just turn to that. Yeah. There's also another tool that not a lot of people know about um, that can be effective if you keep it up. Uh, BC Tell has a, a landline where you can phone up and you'd say, Hi, this is Chris from the Roxy. Just want to let you know that we're having our party this week. Uh, we wanted to give you a personal invite down. Come on down to see us. Say hi when you're in. We'll buy you a drink. Click. And it sends that message out to everyone with a voicemail in, really? on your database. Really? Yeah. So you lit I could literally phone up and say, Hey, just was looking through the files, saw your name, thought I'd give you a phone call, tell you we're having our big party this week. Hope to see you down. Talk to you later. Wow. Click. They well, think it's personal. to them. Right. And I just did 1,500. Yeah, yeah. Wow, that's huge. It's, it's, a, it's a terrific thing. And I'm sure cities everywhere have yeah. it. It's just you have to phone the, the TELUS company or I like whatever that. telephone group that you have. Really it's, like a, that. it's an incredible tool. Increasing your odds. Awesome. Yeah. Exactly. Invite people to your club. Yeah. Speak well of it when you're out there talking to people. When they come up to you, they've given you, you, know, you give them a pass. And, you know, how is it? Oh, it's great. Come down. You've got to get there early. Come hang out with me. We're going to have a great time. Because we are walking advertisement for the place. Exactly. Like that's, we are always representing the place that we're working for. Always. And it doesn't matter. You know, I suffer from road rage big time. And <laughs> I have to think about that, that, you know, I could be driving beside somebody who's going to the place that I'm working. And here's me going, you know, getting all mad at people. And I can't do that anymore because, you know what, they see me and they're... That, that girl, she's, I'm not going to have her as my waitress. And I've actually had that happen to me before. I honked at some guy. And later that night he was in there and he's like, you were the girl. And I'm like, yeah, okay, so you're driving a little bit <laughs> slow. Uh, I was in reverse too. I, was, I got cut off by a guy in a truck. And he turned around and he goes, hey, you work at the Roxy. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> but he was full on ready to get out of his truck and yell at me because I'm honking on the horn. Just, All right. It was brutal. But he turned around, hey, I know you. It was exactly the same thing. And he was in that night. Yeah, you never know. Two, two, two people well, and you know, it's safer in those situations. Yeah. Russ, I think um, definitely we have to be friendly. People who are in the industry, sociable or whatever like that. You, your own person, as as J uh, W. Dale actually pointed out, your health and everything, your your presence, as uh, Mike pointed out to everybody, as a personal business card, your whole being. We are social. Oh, huge. We work socially yeah. with people in a social environment. So it's very important to have yourself and your whole presence be always like that. You have to really watch yourself. I know We're it's all frustrating stage. sometimes. You know, keep in mind, people recognize you. I always forget. You know, I figure that I go into work, you know, I'm wearing my work stuff, you know, and I'm, you know, doing all this stuff and being to people. Great. You know what? I leave that at work because that's a different me. That's a different level of me. Right? I gear up to, to work in the nightclub. Great. When I leave that behind, I'm much quieter. I'm much calmer. I like to watch. I'm very... I'm very mellow, right? And I, I forget the fact that, you know, people will go, hey, you're from the Rock Center. I'm like, oh, I'm surprised you recognize me in real clothes. Like, it always, it always surprises me. But people are watching you. People notice you. Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, one of the things we did when uh, opening up the restaurant was we went down to the beach. We were just handing out promo passes at the beach. Yes. Easiest place in the world. Um, but uh, the weirdest thing that happened to me was hanging out at the beach. And, and you're getting recognized by people all over. Yeah. You know, you go to the beach and, or anywhere. Oh. You know, we're in Vegas and you get no, noticed because you're, you're from... Uh, yeah. I went, uh, actually went on a flight down to Miami. And on the plane, ended up sitting next to someone who was like a total regular customer. Yeah. And it's just like... It's a very small you know, world. Yeah, exactly. You, you're like a billboard. You have to be on, on stage totally. all the time or at least be ready to be. Exactly. Totally agree with that. Sure. I think, too, if you're selling the place where you work at, like especially like the place at the Roxy, it wouldn't be good for me to be a staff member and say, hey, come down on Friday, come to this. I mean, you have to tell them before this time. You, you have to yeah. do, like, I mean, I see that all the time at the door, and Vic's standing there, and, well, I'm a friend of the new da-da-da-da-da, and can I, me and my 20 friends, and it's 10.30 at night on Saturday. Well, you have to be specific when you're encouraging people to come, because I'll tell you, that'd be the worst thing. If you invite someone to come down, they come down, they can't get in. Exactly. They're not coming back. 
That's why we recommend having it, like, like I said, a Sunday to Thursday, like early, because mm -hmm. you know that you're not busy in those times. And be specific. We're not as busy, exactly. So put that on your card, no question, because you don't want, is it, you could really piss somebody off there. You're well, yeah, and then they're not coming back. Exactly. Yeah, you made them feel special, and then exactly. you told them they're not. Exactly. Do you have a point, Dave? Sure. Um, when I'm out in the boat, you know, out for dinner and stuff like that, people always, everyone's interested in what you're doing, what you do, or stuff like that. And it always comes up while well, I'm a bartender. And uh, I'll invite them back because we have half price appetizers and stuff like that too. So I'll say between nine and after nine. And, or if they're sitting at the bar, I'll say, oh, we have half price appetizers at this time. So before a movie or something like that. And they always like, I can see them. They come back like the first time they're ever. Ian, quit smiling like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. No, no, but they come back. You know, it, like that personal invitation like that, it's like right. a Hallmark greeting card. You know, people feel good and warm and fuzzy, you know? Like, oh, he actually invited me back to this place. You know what I mean? It's like, I'm the host. Come on now! <laughs> <laughs> Plus, you added another option to them. Like, before the movie, they might have gone somewhere else to eat, or they may have eaten at home. Hey, wait a minute. Didn't that guy say there's half price after? Yeah, I don't want to cook. And then yeah. you've made it for them and given them another choice. People are very easily mind. I don't know what it's called. It's called manipulation. Right. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah, but in a, in talking a about way. industry, you and I started uh, leaving passes with tips on tables when we used to go to get something to eat. We would leave yeah. like a pass, a couple of passes, and a tip. Definitely. Just you know, as an added good value. Tip. Yeah, had good yeah. tips. Oh, it's it's better. Right. But yeah, wherever you go, when you go to order, you know, you're uh, ordering food or you're, uh, you know, getting a, a movie or you're, you're at a movie or you're, you're shopping, anywhere. Anywhere is a good place to find a new customer. Right? Be approachable. I mean, work at getting people into your own bar. Yeah.